yo, 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 what's up everyone? Welcome to the No Life Tech Show. This episode is going to be released early and every episode after will now be released on Wednesday. So Tuesday you're getting gaming, Wednesday you're getting tech. We record them on Monday. That way we're not waiting, that way we're not recording, waiting a week to release it. And then by the time you hear it, your news is already two weeks old because we're reviewing news that's one week old. You know what I'm saying? So we're releasing pretty much a couple days right after we record them. Uh, gaming gets released the next day. And that will be that. No, it's not live. You're just getting a pre-recorded show each and every week, twice a week. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, at No Life Digital. Make sure you hit up our website, which you can see right here in the bottom right-hand corner, nolife.digital. That's all you need to type. There you go. And then you're on the website. It's got everything, reviews, previews, articles, uh, videos, of course, podcasts, going to be adding a couple more podcasts up there. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming to No Life, so just keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you're following us on Twitter, our Instagram, and uh, you're just staying updated on what we're doing. And uh, I don't know, let's start. Let's just start the show. Let's bring on the dudes. What's up, my dudes? What's going on, duties? How was your weekends? Yo, Yo feeling better. Yeah, you were sick Less last sick. week. Yep. Got, got the a cold? flu at the end. Oh, you got a flu? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, no, I basically couldn't do anything all last week. A lot of people were getting over it. There was like that period where I got the flu and everyone got the flu there. And then now there's this period where everyone got the flu now. So it's like, if you missed the flu the first time, you're definitely getting it the the second time. And I'm still fine. Knock on wood. Oh, you haven't gotten sick at all, huh? Not at all. Uh, I Keep had a, like way. a small cold, but like nothing that was more than just like a sniffles and a cough back in like early December. Yeah, that was it so far. I'm I'm only good for like one sickness a year for a couple days. I usually don't get that sick. Definitely haven't gotten the flu in years, but I did get it this year, and it was bad. I got it really bad this year, so I'm thinking maybe. Maybe the world is getting some more aggressive flus. Have you guys heard about Disease X? Is that the new mm-hmm. uh, like like pig like what was the the swine flu and bird flu and now it's Disease X? <clears throat> well, listen to this. This is I just learned about this over the weekend. Disease X. There's a CNN article that came out a couple days ago, and we become um, zombies. Actually, this came out today. World Health Organization gets ready for disease X. Basically what this is is that there's they know that we're going to be getting hit with a huge uh, biological illness soon because what's happening is the, the glaciers are melting in the Arctic and what that is doing is releasing uh, bacterias that haven't been introduced into the atmosphere ever before. And these bacterias are brand new to the world and we just haven't built up one, an immune system to fight off these bacteria, or two, built up antibodies to to um, you know make medicines to fight these these this, this whatever this disease is, and they're really really worried about this. So ultimately, it's global warming causing this this mass hysteria. Look into it because it's fucking terrifying. It's definitely uh, pretty crazy. The World Health Organization included Disease X in its most recent global plan for accelerating research and development during health emergencies like the Ebola, SARS, or Zika epidemics. The strategy and preparedness plan known as the 2018 R&D Blueprint was published last month. So what exactly is Disease X? This enigmatic name represents the knowledge that is a serious international epidemic could be caused by a pathogen currently unknown to cause human disease. Um, so it's, uh, it's not looking good for the old, uh, mankind race here. Excuse me, humankind race. Dude, it's the population control disease. You think the, uh... It's gonna shred the population down. You think the Illuminati is, uh, preparing some disease X in their labs right now? Bet you they've already harvested it. I hope so. See, what I think, if I'm the Illuminati, I don't want to kill the population. Because that's kind of what makes you money, you know? But I guess they don't need money because they just run things. So I guess yeah, really not, what they're worried about is just the longevity. Well, it's of not about say, yeah, what, is, what, is, what is there to run if everyone's dead? Yeah. yeah. It's not about killing the population. It's about holding the cure ransom, essentially. Killing off those you don't want and keeping your, your quote-unquote 
utopian society where you are in charge at all times. Yeah, keeping the pure name, whatever, you know, like the Lannisters or something. Could be a... Uh... Okay, Hitler. <laughs> Could be a... Uh... Their ivory towers need, you know, a workforce <laughs> to work for nothing. I mean, this, this, this is the thing with, like, big conspiracies. It's like, what what is the end goal? Like, the flat earth stuff, we talked about that. There's real no end goal there. You know, like what's the end goal of of telling everyone that the Earth is round when it's not? There's, there is none. What's the end goal of killing everyone with a fucking disease that could possibly kill your family if you're not too careful? I don't know. I don't think there. I don't think there's much benefit from that. Dude, you got um, that one person. dude who made fun of you in high school is dead now. <laughs> well, that's easy oh, to to God. deploy. That's a lot easier to deploy than just a fucking strain of rare bacteria. Dude, but, you hold the world yeah, really. ransom for one million dollars. Yeah, but they don't need money, you know? We're a million. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a nickel to them. Yeah. They don't need that. Dude, it's all about power. Um, all right. Anyways, let's get into some of this what we've been watching, listening to, and using. Let's start off with some media. Um I'm going to talk about Walking Dead real quick. Recap Walking Dead. We'll talk about it every week. Last the night's only, episode. Wayne just likes doing this segment every week because he's the last person <laughs> in the old, entire world who's still alert. watching it. In case anybody, you know, messages us, you guys spoiled it for me. Spoil alert now. <laughs> I don't know why I'm eating. Hold on. Let me stop eating really quick. Excuse me. This is very unprofessional of me. Starving. By the way, I just got into like uh, caramelized peanuts, which is good shit. Pretty good. Okay, so caramelized is in covered in caramel or just like the way they're prepared? They put like sugar on them and they bake them. That's basically what they do. Okay. So they're like they have like a crunchy, sugary shell um, to them. I can't, I can't do the crunchy bits. That's why I don't like caramel corn. You don't like crunchy? It's uh, my teeth. Oh, your teeth are that fucked up? You can't eat crunchy it's things? Not that, it's, not, it's not that they're that fucked up. It's just that they get stuck really easily in my teeth, and I hate it. Mm. Well, they definitely do get stuck in your teeth. Like right now, because I can't talk. All right. So, Walking Dead. This is that last episode I thought was pretty good. There was some crazy... Spoiler alert. There's going to be some spoilers. Um, there was a death in this which was not surprising. And this is kind of where I'm starting to get lost in this show. This, Isn't that happening every week? Yeah. There's Haven't this... they been like killing off all of the char- every it's, character? It's been every week. Well, they're killing off characters in just ways that they killed them off before. Like this, this they, they focused on two guys who are kind of like side pieces to the story. They're part of the story, but they're still side pieces. And what they do is they film this emotional montage for an app well i should say more like 30 minutes because this show is just getting destroyed by ads every five fucking minutes there's five minutes of ads and it's driving me insane um so like when i watch it i record on youtube tv i have to constantly have my hand on the remote to fast forward through the stupid fucking commercials but uh, it's like every time they do this emotional little thing and they focus on these characters and then one of them fucking dies at the end and the other one watches them. And the same thing happened in this episode. The story did not progress in any way, shape, or form forward. And they, dude, I don't know what's going on because the entire Walking Dead community is up in arms right now. And I think this might be the last season that I'm watching Walking Dead, guys. I think, I think this might be the last one. I don't know how... They're going to be able to redeem themselves, but it shit is getting boring. It's getting boring. So they just build up like these characters and then cue the music. In the arms of an angel. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I will say that this last episode, it was a cool premise. And I did like how they brought in religion into it. And I like one of the other characters a lot. But the way that they kind of killed the guy was kind of lame. It was stupid. Anyways. Then there is a Homeland. show about zombies where everyone dies to a zombie. Gets really repetitive and lame. <laughs> well, he didn't die. He doesn't die from a zombie in this episode. He dies in an even more boring way. But I mean, Homeland that, that takes that that takes effort. Then, like you got to really try to like make a death less boring than a zombie death. Yeah. Well, all right. I'll tell you what happens. Essentially, the 
the two he's with the preacher it's a doctor and a preacher and he's trying to bring the preacher and or he's the preacher is about to die he's like real fucked up isn't and that the, gabriel yeah and the doctor about from, time he died well he's not dead damn uh, it and the he doctor <laughs> uh needs to get to the hilltop or needs to get to yeah the hilltop um because he needs to tend to maggie who's pregnant right so what happens is they're they're going through like this little fucking buddy buddy uh, journey through Georgia, and then uh, there's like scenes of like faith, like uh, Gabriel's pretty much going blind, and then he has, and then the doctor kind of gets caught up in a bear trap, and he's like, oh shit, I'm stuck, and then um, the doctor's about to die, and Gabriel he's about to go blind, he picks up a revolver, closes his eyes, and God travels the bullet into a zombie's brain so i thought that was kind of cool involving faith and stuff into this episode and then at the end of the episode they get captured by the saviors and they're like shit gabriel's like you know god is still leading the way don't you worry uh god is leading the, the way and then the doctor just looks over and goes i think i found the way and then he just picks up the, the enemy's dude's gun and then shoots himself in the head so I was like, God, God needs so, to end the show now you're really gonna fucking do it like that like that so, quick what are you guys talking about? VR chat and Ugandan knuckles? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty he's, much. A, he's actually showing them the way. <laughs> no, this is, we're talking about Walking Dead, and oh god, yeah. It, it, last night's episode was a little disappointing. They always have these filler episodes, but it's like this is the I think the fourth or fifth episode. It's like, come on, don't give us a filler episode now. Should Man, you would hate way. you would hate watching anime then. This is all filler. No, you would hate watching a specific kind of anime called Shonen. Yep, yep. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, all the good Shonen, eight hundred plus episode anime. I don't mind filler. Like the way filler. that uh, uh, Breaking Bad did filler episodes was awesome. Like that one episode with the yeah, fly. The Breaking fly Bad episodes. Was awesome. Everybody no, loves the fly. That's episode. a great way to do a filler episode. And this was like kind of a good filler episode, but. Like, don't kill someone off that way. At least give him a more dramatic yeah. death, I guess. I don't know. You know what show had the worst filler? Lost. Lost had the worst filler, especially uh, season three. I've still yet to watch all of Lost. It's a good show, but the filler episodes are so bad. Yeah, I'm not very you interested in that. Any episode that features the character is Nikki. There's like Nick and Paula, whatever the freaking names were. Skip that shit. And yeah awful all right well that was well, that was walking down but homeland is fucking this is my shit right now so right now they're dealing with um they're dealing with like an alex jones situation which is super interesting they're dealing with a president who basically wants to um assassinate alex jones and now we're dealing this latest episode now we're dealing with russian uh, fake news kind of infiltrating the American political scheme and it's all wrapping up into like modern day politics and it's just super interesting and I highly recommend if you enjoy politics check out Homeland because it's fucking dope um, and that's really all I wanted to say about that I've been really I think this is it's just every season has just been so good so far have you uh, started Jessica Jones yet? it dropped on Friday no I have not should I? I like the first season. Me and Kate like the first season. I I haven't watched it yet. Um, I'm actually kind of behind because I still need to catch um, the last two shows. What was it? Defenders and Punisher. But um, yeah. You haven't seen Punisher the, yet? I know, I know. I still haven't finished it yet. Oh, damn. Um, I was told that Jessica Jones has, um, what's his name? Um, David Tennant, the purple man, he's back. And I'm like, I don't, I, I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know if that's true. But if it is, I'm like, I really don't kind of want that. I want a new villain, or if he's in it, like let him be in there for like as a foil for like an episode or two. But don't make him the center point again, because that just feels like a rehash. But Jessica yeah. Jones was my outside of Daredevil, that was my favorite of the others, was Jessica Jones. Really? Interesting. Yeah, dude, oh wait, are you saying of the bad. Netflix series? You're saying? Yeah, between oh. Daredevil Iron Fist, which was the worst. Luke Cage, which I really did like, but Jessica Jones beats that out right behind Daredevil. From you haven't seen Punisher, you haven't. Seen yeah, Punisher. no, that's my next one. So I gotta see where that's gonna lie. Easily out. the best. Daredevil's good. Or you can be like me and have Punisher? seen none of them. 
<laughs> you should watch them, dude. They're pretty entertaining, man. You should, you They're should all watch pretty them. entertaining. Daredevil. You should watch The Punisher. And Daredevil. Daredevil. We'll I like Daredevil as well. Daredevil's dude, pretty dope. Wilson Fisk is one of the best Marvel villains they've ever done in the movies and shows because he's such an interesting character. You don't hate him and you don't like it's such a weird dynamic with him. Yeah. No, this is a. I like what they're doing with that because I'm not a big superhero fucking guy, but the Netflix ones I'll watch. I think they're super interesting. I didn't like Iron Fist. I didn't like the Asian mysticism bullshit. Um, I like the, the mysticism bullshit, but that show had no action and was just Danny Rand being a bitch. Basically. Basically. I, uh, I, I started like Luke watching. Cage. I started watching uh, the Frankenstein Chronicles. I haven't gotten too far into it. I'm about episode four. The Frankenstein it's, Chronicles. Yeah, it's, it's got Sean Bean in it, and it's set in like. Does, uh, does he die? You know, eight, he's the main character, but oh, he's gonna die by the end of season one. Oh, is he Frankenstein? No, it's a. Uh, oh. It's like a. It's like 1800s mystery in London kind of thing. It's like kind of like detective mystery thing. Like there's some kind of serial killer or something that's like sewing together dead body parts of little kids hmm. and leaving the bodies around. And so like, interesting. Do I now write an art news article about how we're not supposed to have remorse for the the monster? Oh, you mean the snowflakes uh, who uh, <laughs> who are, who, are, who, are, who believe Frankenstein was really a victim? Yeah. Except yeah. that was the whole point of the fucking book. Yeah. No, sorry. That that was a ter- that, that happened like that. last week or something. But right. someone, some idiot at Sky News, wrote a huge article about uh, snowflake students being a problem because they were finding uh, sympathy for Frankenstein's monster character from the fucking book. <laughs> Which was the point of the book? I don't. As an English having an English degree, that makes me mad. Have Anytime been, I see the word snowflake. Who- or triggered. I just don't oh, read it. I don't read that yeah, article anymore. Immediately, it's just like it's immediately disallowed. Wait, so like you obviously didn't pass fucking high school if you haven't read fucking that like the book and understood the boy. Of course not. If he's working for fucking Sky News. <laughs> that was it was just sorry, that was just funny. But that was what all I could think of as soon as I you mean, said Frankenstein. I mean he's a fucking robot if he's working for Skynet, let's be honest. <laughs> all right. Pretty much. We, we shouldn't have sympathy for the Terminator. No, but no. Tell me more, because I bet this actually sounds more interesting to me, to be honest, than another yeah, well, another it's... superhero movie. Yeah, no, it's basically that's what it is. It's like it's a good mystery, like detective type show, like uh, like Sherlock. Yeah, kind of like that. Except he's not as smart. He's not like Sherlock. You know, in Sherlock, you're always like he's a fucking genius and he'll figure it out really easily. And in this one, you can tell the guy's not a fucking genius and he's having some issues and troubles. But uh, yeah, it is really interesting. I, I'm on like episode four, and I'm probably gonna watch an episode before I go to sleep tonight. No, I like it. So then. Yeah. It, it, I, I thought that it was gonna be kind of like supernatural, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be that yet. I don't actually think it will be supernatural. How is supernatural still on the air? And now oh doing God, I, want, I, sh- I should not have said that word so many times. <laughs> Now they're doing God a damn. Scooby-Doo crossover episode that's animated. I just, wait. That's I, actually still going on. Yes. It's still on the air. Yeah. How many seasons do they have? Like fifteen. It's it's More a soap opera. Know, it's man. a fucking soap opera. Yeah, that like show. I thought they were at like twenty five years ago. It's dumb. My mom loves. She loves that show. And she's it's like she all, for some, some reason all moms love that show. It's like it's the like fucking a mom Simpsons. show. I, you mean <laughs> like the, the show with Simpsons. two hot guys as the main characters, and you're wondering why moms love it? That's exactly. True. Nobody's quite sure how long the sense of it been on the air, but they know that it's been on the air for a long fucking time. They know it's been on the air for too long. <laughs> like, is, did, didn't Supernatural come around at like the end of the nineties and early two thousands? I feel like it had to be on the air. Two thousand five. I just looked it up. It came out in two thousand five, apparently. So twelve like seasons. Buffy, yeah, they're on. They're in thirteen right now. Buffy and Angel had to be on the air at the same time as that. God. Uh, yeah. I did not. I, I'm probably one of the only. I don't know your guys' thoughts, but I never liked Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I didn't give a shit about it. The only reason I would watch it is because Sher- Sarah Michelle Gellar was on. I've never watched one episode of that show. I, I never like, made it through. I an like Joss Whedon. That's pretty much my thing. 
Joss Whedon. <laughs> Who was the producer of it? <laughs> All right. Um, enough media. Unless you guys have anything else that you want to add to the media. I think that's pretty much it, right? No, nah, dude. I was so sick. It's about the only thing I did all week was play Madden. There you go. Getting in, that those, was like, getting in those it, matches. Yeah, dude. It was, it was Madden. Like, that was the only thing I could, like, concentrate long enough. Wait, which to Madden? Do. 17. <laughs> all right. There you go. That's not too bad. Moving on. I expect him to be like, oh, four. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> no, I've been playing 17 a lot. But it was like, I don't know, dude. Madden's the perfect sick game because you have to pay attention for three seconds and then you have a 30 yes. second, like, cough, dying break. Yes, exactly. And if you wanted to, you can run the ball a little bit, but you don't have to. <laughs> you let the computer do it. All right. So. I, I also got this uh, this new NAS system in. It's a MyCloud EX2 Ultra. Um, it's one of their business sort of NASs, but it's also kind of more consumer. I got the 8 terabyte version, which is around 450 bucks. It's pretty expensive, but when you look at NASs, it's actually kind of... Oh, no. Oop, wrong one. When you look at NASs, it's kind of in the... It's kind of competitively priced. What I, uh, I mean, that's that's pretty cheap if it's got the storage with it. Yeah, it comes with the storage that's, with it, with this, like, which is WD, you know, WD right. red drives. So because that's that's like normal price for a good NAS with just the NAS, no base build or anything. You know what I mean? And I was willing to spend like some good money on a nice, um, just a NAS system that I can oh, just run free NAS on and get my own storage. But I was at Micro Center and they didn't have that many options. Um, so unfortunately I was, didn't want to wait. So I was like, I'll just grab this one. This looks pretty good. Eight terabytes seems to be good for now. Once I fill that up, you can just swap them right out. Uh, there's different RAID configurations. I'm just running it in, um, RAID zero right now. Um, but what I like about it is how easy it is. I like Western digital. I've always enjoyed their, uh, storage options. I've, I have this old Western digital SSD, that I swear to God, I've, I've it looks like it's been through hell and back, and it works completely fine. So ever since then, I've like you know been pretty, pretty happy with Western Digital, and um, um, they're go they're they're good. I don't understand the whole storage wars type thing, because like I mean I I've, I have drives from pretty much everyone, and I've been using computers long enough that I've had drives die from every company, like so I don't understand yeah. like the whole like that old war that used to happen between Seagate and Western digital of like people well, I guess getting really heavy on each side. It really comes down to what speed and reliability when, when you're talking about storage. And, um, I mean, I, they, I just really care about reliability when it comes to a NAS system and, you know, a couple WD reds in there that are, that are tested to be running 24, seven, 365. I'm like, okay, this will, th these will last me a pretty good, pretty good amount of time until you know there's an intel optane drive i could just throw all of my storage on one day but another reason why i got it is because of the software uh western digital software is pretty simple and i just needed something where i could where, when i go on this computer which is in my office and i shoot a video i can take all those raw files the finished files all the images all the photoshop stuff that i do with it put it all in a folder a project folder and then just dump it on this drive um and doing that with just kind of a, a click of a button seems seemed pretty nice. The problem is, is that it's actually a little bit more funky to set up than just plug and play. So when I'm on my home network, uh, it runs perfectly fine. It's extremely fast. It's got uh, uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet on there. So it's running pretty damn quick and I can download and upload quickly to it. But when I come over here, I don't have access to the office router. So I need to go and talk with them and say, hey, you need to open up these ports for me so I can uh, get into my router uh, efficiently. Now I can still get into it. I can just use their online service, which I, which is what I have been doing. It's just a little bit slower. I don't have that just straight up connection to my router. And I can understand why they won't do that or why they don't do that from Wait, default. You're, you're in an office that doesn't have like just an ethernet port? No, it does. It does. I, I have an Ethernet con connection set up here, so I can bring that over here. The reason well, why I have it at my house is, is I just have a way better internet at my house, you know? Well, wait, are you running your PC off Wi-Fi right now? That's more what I mean. Like, why, do, why no. wouldn't you just 
use the Ethernet port, just get like a switch and just have it go in there or get your own router where you'd have control over the ports. Well, no, I have an Ethernet port that I just connect right to my PC. So I'm straight okay, up, right. I'm connected. But I need to open up certain ports for some reason to connect to this MyCloud box that's on a different network. But I can okay. connect to it online. I can connect to it through like a browser, but I can't directly connect to the NAS system. Um, so you know like when you go open windows and you have like the things on the side where it's like my network, my computer, I can have an option there where it's my, my NAS system, um, but I can't do that right now. I have to connect through a sign in and then get through the browser. So it's a little bit of a laborious process and I just want direct connection, get full speeds from it. I just need to speak with them to allow them to open the ports up, which makes sense because I, they, I guess they just don't want everyone to just start connecting routers, wireless routers to the, to the office network, I guess. Not really sure. Or I could just bring it over here and then just connect it from my home, which is what I might do. The internet difference, speed difference isn't that big. Um, so I'm not, not exactly sure what I want to do there. But everything else, other than that kind of little hiccup, it's been pretty. It's been pretty dope having my own cloud drive. You know what I mean. So I've already dropped down all of my cloud storage to the free options because I don't need them anymore. I could just use this thing, and uh, I mean that do, saves me a ton of money this, monthly. Do they have a phone app for it? I'm assuming. Yeah, they got a browser app. And how's that work? It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. It looks just like. It kind of looks like uh, the Apple Files app. Okay. Um, if you if you've seen that, so well, I'm I'm assuming it's it's similar to their, uh, you know, if you just have like a portable uh, Western Digital Drive, like their My Passport software type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much like the that. same. Yeah, and I mean also, I, that's why I thought about buying a MyCloud. That software, it's a little bit limited, but it's nice. It works. Yeah, I don't it's, need. It's pretty to look at. It's got a good UI. Exactly. Like, I don't need fifty people to connect to it at a time to access all different sorts of files with different, uh, you know, crypto keys involved. Like it's just me. So right. I, I don't. I need a, like a simple UI and a limited kind of structure. It's fine for me. Um, also, what I do like is they do have like a sync, um, a my cloud sync thing, which basically is like how. Google's sync folder is. So anything that you put in there, it's gonna appear on all of your devices, which is pretty dope. Um, so I, I, I like it. I like it so far and I haven't had many issues with it. It seems to be running uh, pretty damn quickly. And if you're just someone who is more doing more content creation, I think this is a good option. Um, you know, depending on what kind of files you're running. I mean, if, you're, if you got like, you know, red footage, you might want to go a step up and get a you know an enterprise NAS, but if you're just doing 4K files, 1080p files, a bunch of images, and you just need a place to just dump all that shit, take a look at it because it's it's pretty good price. And um, like I said, the UI is nice and nice and clean, and they're they're pretty good. Let me see the uh, specs, the specs on this. Let me see if I can find them, just so you can know them. So it's running. Um, It's running, it got gigabit ethernet, USB 3.0 port. It's using an Armada 385 1.3 gigahertz dual core, one gigabyte, DDR, G, one gigabyte DDR3, and um, you got a couple other ports on there. And then it, if you get it with the drives, they give you red, WD red NAS drives, which basically means they've been rated to stay on all the time. If you get like black drives or blue drives, it probably work just as good. They're just not rated at staying on all the time. I don't know even know what their testing process is like. That's just what I went with. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty dope. And you can yeah. get all the way up well, to the, twenty terabyte options, which is a shitload. Now, can you you said you with that one you can still like shock them if you need to, right? Or, like pull them out, put new ones in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know I know they're cheap ones. It's you can't. Yeah. Well, you you can, but you can't. Yeah. It's it's shuckable in the sense that you just take a knife to the plastic. You know what I mean? No, no. These days, there's a little <laughs> latch. You just get right up in there and just hot swap them if you need to, um, which is I think is a must if you're going to be spending at least you know 200 bucks on a NAS. You definitely want to be able to switch out your drives. And they also have some for for security purposes. 
So if you're if you have a security system and you just want to keep all that all those files somewhere, they have separate NASs for that too, and separate drives for that. I think they're WD Purple drives. Um, like I don't know that the I don't know how much of a difference that is, but I think that's pretty pretty cool. Get into some uh, get into making your own cloud, man. It's you know, let's think. It's I, cheaper long term. Right. I was about to say, Way I'm, cheaper I'm long trying term. to figure out the exact price that I'm saving by doing so. Because I still need my AWS server, which I spend a good amount of money on to serve content to the internet. Because it, it can't really do that. It's not like a server. Um, so with that being said, I don't really use that as a dump box anyway. Uh, I was spending about, I think it was like two ninety nine for the extra tier of Apple I was spending another, I want to say like just 10 bucks in total. So about, say about 15 bucks a month um, in total for like five different cloud storage options. And uh, now I don't have that cost, that cost per month anymore. And it's my own personal one. So I can do whatever I want with it and don't have to worry about, I don't know. I don't have to worry about having a company have control over it, you know. So in the long run, it's a little cheaper. All right, let's get into tech news. Well, tech news, media news, culture news. Shkreli, Martin Shkreli, sentenced to seven years in prison for fraud. We talked about this yesterday. Uh, not not looking good for the fucking Shkreli, man. I mean, are we going to have to, like, petition the feds and walk in the streets until we can get that new Wu-Tang album? I don't know how see, they're going to be able about. to release it. The album was seized by the feds, so... Yep. No, I, that's why I wanted him to keep it, because, I mean, there's a higher chance of him, like... Selling. Ne- yeah, he's, he needs money, you know, year four of prison, you know what I mean? Versus yeah. it ever getting back from the feds. Here's yeah. the sad part. He's going to go to a federal, just a white-collar prison when I really wish he went to, like, legit prison and got butt-fucked. Well, he's definitely going to a legit prison, and he there's definitely a chance of him getting butt fucked. I just don't know exactly how long he'll be there. So he's sentenced for seven years. He'll probably go for like two if we're good gonna be behavior. honest. Not only good behavior, but if you're rich and you have and ties, white. you're 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 yeah, and white, <laughs> you're gonna be getting out. Um, but at the same time, I'm sure there's at least one someone there whose grandmother he screwed over. True. Yes, there's definitely gonna be some. <laughs> hey, he anger bashed. Dudes he bashed Ghostface. He might get shanked. <laughs> yeah. So when they sentenced him, he was crying, which uh, we don't have any video footage of, but there was a like couple a drawings. Bitch. <laughs> he was crying. He says, "I'm look. I look back and I'm embarrassed and ashamed." He told the court, "I'm terribly sorry." Uh, he said to his investors, "I lost your trust. There's no conspiracy to take down Martin Shkreli. I took down Martin Shkreli with my disgraceful and shameful actions." He described the time he spent in jail as a heartbreaking experience. As trial last year, Shkreli often wore a smirk and was chastised by the judge for his behavior, including an incident in which he told reporters that the prosecutors on the case were junior varsity. Now, what I like about Martin Shkreli is that kind of stuff. I like, you know, just talking shit. I, I think that stuff's funny. But that is what gets you in jail. You know what I mean? Like, was the meme worth it? Was the meme worth losing all of your assets, including, you know, a fucking Wu-Tang album and a fucking... He also had the Carter V uh, from Lil Wayne. And then going to jail on top of that for multiple years, it's not worth it, man. The meme is not worth that, you know? And Let's be no real, one's going to remember the this guy. Always, the memes are always worth it. I disagree. The memes are always worth it. I do disagree you, do you in remember, this situation. You remember the episode of Futurama with like the uh, 80s business guy? Mm. That's that's Martin Screlly. No, he's definitely a 2000s business guy. That whole fi- uh, or pharma, pharma racket that he was doing where he was basically purchasing lower, uh, lower priced drugs and then... Instead of doing R and D to create his own drugs, he would basically buy those companies out, jack those prices up, and just keep doing that and take the profits from that and purchase other other drug companies. And I mean, it was it, there. It was everyone in pharma is doing it. He was just the asshole that was you know telling everyone about it 
and basically defrauding his investors, which you don't do. If you're gonna defraud anyone, you don't defraud your investors. That's just the, that, that's junior varsity. And, and you don't that's brag about varsity. doing something obviously illegal. Yeah. And then like, what really took him down like was, what, what really took him down was like, he was like gonna, he said he wanted someone to get a lock of Hillary Clinton's hair or something. And essentially that was enough for the, for the prosecution to go and lock him up. And then they just so expedited the trial. What a weird fucking is, dude. Is he trying yeah, he's to a fucking clone weirdo. Hillary? No, nah, he's just a weirdo. He's just a fucking... He comes up, can I have a lock of your hair? He's obviously someone who's never, you know, had some sort of childhood or he had never never had some sort of like... I don't know. Well, I mean, have Something you ever seen the seen that stream of him streaming the first minute of the Wu Tang album? Yeah, like the his background is just it's just a guitar amp and a guitar and just white walls. Like the dude looks like he just bought his first apartment. Yeah, like that's like it's not like he spends his money on anything like a nice house or anything. It's just like, geez, dude, that looks like a five hundred dollar apartment. Yeah, have you seen the Vice documentary with him in it? It's pretty interesting. He's a pretty interesting character who's going to jail, and by the time he gets out, he's he's gonna have nothing and no nor no notoriety. No one's gonna remember him, and um, I don't know. I'm sure we'll hear of him again because he seems to be a pretty resourceful kind of guy. All right, moving on. This is a little bit of a serious story. Porn actors Lee Raven and Riley Nixon allege abuse, violence, and boundary violation on set. It's kind of a longer story. I can't really read the whole thing. I just wanted to bring it up because it's super interesting. And I did want to talk a little bit about porn since we sometimes talk about porn on this show. But go read this article. It's by Jezebel. I don't care what you think about Jezebel. This is a pretty interesting uh, piece here. And essentially, there was some abuses that happened upon a porn set. Boundary violations, stuff like that. Have you guys ever seen... I want to say it was called Kink. It was a documentary. It might have been called something else, but it was essentially... Yeah, that sounds right. It's on Netflix. Or maybe it was like Dangerous Sex or something, but it was basically the uprising of kink.com, which is that fetish site. And, dude, it gets like pretty graphic, some of the scenes. And when you see porn like that, it makes you wonder... For some people, they like wondering this. But it makes you wonder, like, how much of it is consensual? How much of it is performance art? How much of it is uh, essentially just rape? You know, essentially just doing something to some, doing something to someone that they didn't really expect or didn't really want. And I think porn gets away with a lot. First of all, porn gets away with a lot of racism. There's a shitload of racism in porn. Um, like the fact that you can go, porn is the only industry where you can go and you can basically search for a specific race and you're going to get porn catered to you that way, right? There's no other industry like that. And I find that pretty interesting how porn, the industry itself, is this kind of insane legal industry. And I'm wondering if there's going to be a time where we regulate porn or a time where it's, it starts to get too crazy or too rest- we're, we're going to have to restrict it because right now, I mean, it's wild West still, they tried to implement like condom laws and stuff and that didn't really work. But I don't know what yeah, you guys, that only, that only mean, works for some States. Doesn't it? Isn't that like a state to state thing? Yeah. I think California was the only one that did it. And then everyone went to Florida because you didn't have to yeah, do it. Miami. Yeah. The problem is one of the big things with porn is like you have a few major companies um, but then you have a ton of like these small companies, amateurs that, that don't follow the regulations right. because they're not being imposed. Like yeah. it, it almost seems like if you have a web, if you have a camera and you want to make porn, like you can pretty much do it, but. And I don't it, mind that as much either. I don't, I don't mind that as much, but then you're going to get stuff like this where, um, you know, there's going to be some crazy shit going on that you don't know if your artist or actress is going to be okay with doing it. And I mean, when you're getting into territory where you're like punching women in the fucking face, which is a porn genre, it's a trope in porn, you know, you're fucking choking them out, putting them in a fucking figure four headlock with your legs 
while they're fucking giving you a blowjob. You know, to the point where they're almost passing out. You're drowning women. You're electrocuting them. Have you ever seen that video of that Asian, and it might have been Russian porn, where they have like that sticky, that ball that's spiky, and they put it in a slingshot, and they shoot it, and it fucking nails the girl right in her asshole? That is a porn that is there. Yes. I don't know what porn you're watching. This is not the porn I watch. That's, it's a very famous Reddit gif. Uh, and I'm sure I you, mean, I'm sure you can just search porn spiky ball ass, and it'll be the first thing that pops up. Probably. I don't know, man. Like, like, this doesn't really it doesn't really surprise me because, like everything else, you really get desensitized. Like porn, decent porn fucks you up. Basically, porn fucks you up. It's a great thing. Everybody loves porn. Everybody loves jacking off to porn. You know. But, like, in the end, it really desensitizes you, like, much more than older generations because we just see all this crazy shit. And then when this article pops up and says that somebody was abused on set, oh shit doesn't, like, surprise me one bit. Because Did it's a business is a business built on the foundation of, uh, you know, degradating. Uh, unrealistic. <laughs> it's also unrealistic fantasy. Like, that's, like, yeah. one of the craziest things is – like i don't say kids but like as you reach that age where you start watching porn like it raises your expectations to what is definitely not real like but i think that none of this is real i think i i don't know if that's true though because i don't expect that <laughs> with women you know yeah no no yeah i'm not I saying you do but i'm saying like like, I don't, we also like, okay, like you're movies, saying, like, like we, there was a time where now. you're saying there was a time which I do agree with. There's a, there was a certain, there was a certain thing that happened in culture where women were expected to take a load on the face, where that wasn't a thing <laughs> in the fucking 40s and the 30s. But nowadays, it's a fucking thing that they're just, you kind of expect like, them to do. And, like, that, and now, really, in like two or three more years, women are just, expected to choke on your dick until they can't breathe and they have snot coming out of their mouth and fucking tears running down their eyes. <laughs> or they sh- they they don't shoot look, a fucking spiky you. ball in their ass. How old it, were you? Not like that. How old were you when you were first introduced to your first like media of pornography and what was the form of media? For me it was the magazines. You know, like at like I think 12 13 it was magazines. Yeah, me yeah too. I mean yeah, pretty much. Like it's either it's usually either magazines or the fuzzy channel. Exactly. Now, yeah, now it's, channel. Internet. it's now it's the internet. Hit up X hamster, you hit up like, you know, kink or whatever it is. And like you're 14 thinking, oh, this is must must be what sex is. No, it's not. This is not what reality is. I don't really think it's that so much as like, I don't know, it's just You've been on the you you know what the sub the subreddit incels is. It's like motherfuckers like that is how like the extreme violent. Why why is that though? Why is it normally like those type of people that get into? Is it because they just they watch so much porn that they just have to keep getting crazier and crazier? Yeah, I think I, I don't think that's what it is. like. I'm I think like a more <laughs> yeah. I like think, why I think, crazier? I would expect more of like I would ex- I would expect more of them to want more of like a real relationship style from porn, where it's more of like that girlfriend experience type of porn. But that's like the lowest denomination of porn. Like it's like uh, stepsister shit, and then fucking you know punching women in the face and shit. That's what gets most of the views. So there's got to be something there, you know. I think it's like people, it, a lot of it, I think, is people that are really like repressed sexually and have a lot of frustration in that area. Yeah. Or it could just be, you know, that's what they get their rocks off to. I don't know, man. Like, it's a people really weird thing. Every 12 year old wants step- stepsister sex because that's the only person they've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> is that it's why like, it does so well? Milf, milf porn. It's like stepsister and uh, babysitter sex. It's like, yeah, but can we all agree, like, po- like, yeah, can we all agree, like, motherfuck son is not something anyone wants to watch? Like, no one wants to. <laughs> ever uh, where did that come from why is that a thing now i hate when i see that it makes me so so fucking society it makes me so mad when i see that shit i don't like that that's why that's a thing (laughs) 
Oh. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I think porn, I think, I think it desensitizing people to sex is a good thing naturally because I don't think people should be repressed sexually. They should want to be able to be open to their partners about what they like and what they want. But then again, I also uh, think that's what you want is to punch your girlfriend in the goddamn face. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> like, if you want to do that and you find someone that wants to have that done to them, then that's a consensual yeah, thing yeah. and that's cool. Yeah. But then you need to get the fuck away <laughs> quickly. It's time for everyone to start playing the hentai games. <laughs> there was this one. There was this one uh, girl that one of my friends uh, was fucking for a little while. And uh, she liked doing the wax thing, you know, when they would burn the candle waxes and drip, you burn candle wax or novelty candle wax and you drip it on the person. And no, no, no. Uh, they didn't they didn't have any candle wax. So she would make him burn pin tops Ooh. like pin caps, plastic, well, burning plastic. Dude, he's trying to get a prison tattoo. Pin, pin caps would burn pin caps and drip it on her. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah. Dude, some yeah. I was with the with a woman uh, in college. The who's... life when you can't afford a candle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, the thing is, is you have to get like the sex like novelty candles instead of actual wax. Right, but I mean, if you're if you're that hard up, like at least go to the dollar store or something that a fucking get, like, those little, like, like those little small ass things of candles. <laughs> yeah, they just wanted to feel you that get, pain. Like, 20 man. tea lights at Dollar Tree or something, you know? Yeah. You can at least do something than a yeah, fucking but, pen cap. Yeah, but when you're horny and there's a pen cap nearby. <laughs> true. <laughs> true, just the way you're describing it made this sound like a routine experience. Yeah, it's no, not it a one-time thing. It, was a, it wasn't a one-time thing. It happened multiple multiple times maybe the pen cap is just the way to go these days yeah maybe it's the step up maybe she started with the candle wax and was like that's not enough anymore well i i, I was with this burnt chemicals hell yeah i was with this um this this foreign exchange student from china in college and there we had a couple sexual encounters and upon the second one she wanted me to choke her and hit her like hard and I was not okay with it. I'm not that type of... I don't like that shit. Like, I like normal fucking sideways sex. That's the kind of shit that I like. Because I just like... more. I'm more of like a, an emotional lover for any of you ladies listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I, I could have pretty much guessed that, like, at least three out of four of us on this podcast are, you know, pussies. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're like... I yeah. want to hold you and I want to yeah. be like really close. And yeah, 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 like exactly. When, we, when I get done, we're just going to lay there for a while. Well, that uh, that can be debatable. I but mean, for the we, most where part, where do you draw the line? Is, is like spanking okay? This wasn't, this was full was on. Really like, she really like, no, he's talking, about, he's talking about legitimately. I she this, wanted like, him to choke face. her. No, yes. no, choke her. To the point where she couldn't breathe yes. and like close to passing out. Yeah. And like, I was yeah. like, I, I'm in Archie. college, right? So I'm like, you know, I'm in an experimenting phase. So I'm like, all right, let's try this out. And I was not satisfying this woman with my, with whatever I was doing. It, she wanted like a legit full on, almost like I was raping her. And it just made me think later on, like there was, there's obviously something there. Something happened to this woman where she wants that. Um, because that to me doesn't seem normal. Right there, maybe a past experience or some type of trauma there, because she wanted me to fucking beat the shit out of her, essentially. And for to some people that might be cool, but to me, I was like, dude, I'm not trying to get arrested. I'm trying to get a fucking associate's degree. God damn it, I can wait. You know, it's not not for me. But there are people like that, and they want. And I'm sure she watches wants porn like that as well. And there's gonna be uh, if there's a a need, there's gonna be some type of supply for it. And unfortunately, like these porn actresses, I think they need to get paid more. I think, I think porn, unless the, the people who consume it don't actually start like helping, Dang. either paying for <laughs> porn or help it like in some way, like who helping. Who pays it. for porn anymore? I pay not for me. porn. I do. Oh, God, I do. Not. Why? No, I do. No, They're, I'm not. I'm not gonna pay for something that I can get for free and I'm done with in like 15 minutes. Uh, I'll tell you why. I, I only go to a certain I only go to certain websites. They're like the like the big ones like X videos and Spank Bang and shit like that, right? And I feel like I've watched all of the good porn. Like there's just no more good free porn out there. I've watched all of it. So now I'm like, well, if I pay for porn, then at least I have an access to like good full porn. 
And like, I don't regret the payment at all. It's pretty cheap for what they want. But I know I, I am in the but minority. How you, but how do you explain that to Kate? I just, I, dude, one time she goes, Wayne, I found your porn folder on your computer. I go, oh yeah, the one labeled porn? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you didn't find it because I didn't hide it. I have no problem with her finding my porn. But um, like I was saying, that there, you're going to, porn is in some hard times right now. And unfortunately, these women understand Look, that like, better yeah, than all of like, us. Por- Porn actresses should, should they? Sh- I mean, they should get paid a lot more considering the low amount of mileage that they have. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because I they mean, start it's less than like an like, NFL player. That's for sure. Yeah, and probably an equal amount of concussions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a veteran in the uh, porn industry. Um, the porn also, industry. lots of pizza. If you're if you're into the o- OBJ news, they like pizza. They like they like pizza. If you checked out any of the most recent news of NFL stars getting caught with models. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I saw that. I don't know what this too. is. I don't know what this story is. Uh, excuse about. me, it wasn't cocaine. It was a pizza. So, cocaine do not mix. Y'all are lying. No. <laughs> yeah, no, he got, he got a, there was like Snapchat videos or some bullshit got leaked of him part having a pizza party as him and uh, his model friend who he was with are claiming. But all it is is apparently just him in bed, like uh, well, it's just a, un, an, a brown object that you can't really make out that he's claiming is pizza crust while she's sitting next to him just with a credit card and uh, white powder and lines that apparently is oregano or Parmesan. Okay. Wow. I mean that's I, that's how I segment. <laughs> that's how I like to eat my pizza with lines of parmesan. <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, you, you gotta be you gotta I take be, a bite and then I snort a line of parmesan. That's the best way to eat pizza. Yeah, dude. Then you, you just uh, be, you light the crust the up, you know. You gotta be really fucking desperate at that point. You're you're trying so hard to not look like that one scumbag dude who would try to get girls high on cocaine to fuck them. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. So. And I don't even think he needs oh, dude, to, no, dude. He yeah, doesn't no, he, need he, to. That was the best part is she's the one who's been coming out saying it was fucking pizza. <laughs> so yeah, like it she, wasn't even he didn't, he wasn't even the one who started that it's a pizza party. Yeah, she doesn't she want her mom like, to know. Oh, yeah, it's, it's fucking pizza. Yeah, she doesn't want her mom to know. That's for sure. All right, moving on from porn. That is a good convo. Porn, man. You're there. I feel like porn's days are limited, and if you like porn. You better start fucking tipping these girls or some shit. Thanks for listening to the No Life Porn Show. I'm always got to have some type of porn involved. Oh, did you guys watch Elon Musk at South by Southwest? His speech? Dude, okay. Elon Musk. I'm the biggest Elon Musk fan. First of all, me and Kate were talking about this last night. I think Elon Musk not only had hair transplants, which is obvious... But I think he took steroids because the dude is fucking jacked. But not jacked in a, like, he went and lifted weights type of jacked. Like, his, his facial structure is changed. He's got, like, that moon jaw, that moon forehead. It looks like he's been taking some fucking Tren or some fucking, some hard, you know, human growth hormones. Because he's ripped, dude. He's gigantic. Second, he starts talking about... um artificial intelligence and we know like he's kind of scared of artificial intelligence i didn't really look into it too much about what he said about it but dude he seems like he's fucking terrified of artificial yeah, inter- intelligence he thinks we live in a fucking simulation wayne does of he, course he's terrified does he really think that Man, yes no he thinks we he, he thinks that there's like what like two possibilities like we're either destroyed in the future or we're living in a simulation right now. Well, dude, when he brings up AI, though, the way he talks about it, it makes sense. Because he was talking it's about like fucking Skynet. That's what he's talking about. I mean, yeah. it's science fiction until it's no longer fiction. Well, he was talking about this program that was like playing a game and how it was tra- it, was, it was using AI to train itself and then it would beat some person, and then it ended up like quickly beating like one of the, the champions. Go, the GoPro, the Go thing, the GoBot. Yeah, some yeah, no, something this thing, like that. That, shit, that shit's insane. Actually, it's pretty cool. But that's not. Well, no, actually, no. The new one is kind of like that because basically what they did with that is the first one is they told it the rule set of Go, 
and then just escape said hey go figure out how to win at go and it took like three days to become the best go player in the world yeah but Had now no, this no, new no one the rule set and what he said was the this new, new one, one the new one didn't, they didn't even give it the rule set yeah and they, they said the new like, one go. is like it, it like is like hundreds of times magnitude better uh in every single combination way possible than that old one which was better than everyone in the world so just in terms of like human versus ai there's just no competing with exponential knowledge like that like you just can't and then it just spins out of control so what he was saying essentially in the in the interview is like look we regulate nuclear arms like we wouldn't give some we, we don't just allow anyone to produce nuclear arms he's like we should do the same for ai because you don't know who's producing some type of ai and if they even know what kind of fail safes are put in place if something does go awry because that could essentially be the end of the world he's I mean, terrified yeah, I mean, of AI. i can see that being an issue in like 20 30 years but right now even even the one that wasn't given the rule set it's, <sighs> it was still programmed basically like it can play three games that is the limit of its thing it yeah can but be the, the problem best, is the best thing at playing three games and figuring them out the only thing it can still do is play three games it's yeah, not the, sentient the problem is is you don't know when you cross that boundary between it only playing that and then all of a sudden it just knows everything and it just completely multiplies and it you know and then it stops the fail safes that you have in place because it just it's programmed to just keep multiplying you know what um, i mean like it just exponential no one's figured out how to make something program itself well that's what maybe, i'm saying we don't once know that happens we, we we can have that discussion but like until then like it, it's still limited by what a programmer says it can do there's well, no that's... ai out there that's writing itself well that's what i'm saying we don't know when you cross you don't know over. when you cross that boundary when it's too late you know what i'm saying like when it's too late like how do you know that it's it's it knows that all of a sudden right because then by the time you figure that out by the time you understand like this program has learned itself to manipulate itself or, or to keep exponentially growing well then well, it's then already you magnitudes pull the, you pull the plug off the machine because so, so right far, but every, that's that's the like, thing like what if it knows that what if it for three days but what if it, it it's obviously going to know that there's going to be fail states put in place so then it would program itself to maybe infect other things around it so it can't be shut down and then before you know it it just spreads like it's a it's like a uh it's just exponential. It just keeps going. I mean, you know, there's yo, no time. Yeah, but once we right have a computer here, that's fast enough to do that, that's actually connected to the internet, like it would have to be connected to the internet to be able to spread it to another machine in, in the first. But you place. don't know that because it's, a, it's, I do. it's AI. You don't know. You don't know what it can. It, it can exponentially yeah, it's, it's, grow. It's a program on a machine. It you're can't thinking just in human. Magically make the internet exist around it. You don't know that though, because you're thinking as a human. This is a thinking as a sentient technology that just knows it's all. It's plugged into the wall. It knows all. You don't know that. Wait, it could be. Wait, it could be out figuring out ways to plug yeah. into fucking trees and shit and be you know photosynthesized into the sky and shit and then all of a sudden and then all of a sudden we're living in fucking terminator i'm gonna be in my bunker all right next thing you know we're in the matrix and the machines have blocked out the sun <laughs> no that th this is what he's talking about okay this is i'm just giving you what elon Musk. oh thinks. i know what he's talking okay. about that's why we make fun of him because like he does have a, he does have good points but so he has good points that aren't gonna ha be a talking point for 50 years but let's I think be, we would say that let, about a lot of talking points that he's brought up, you know, like shooting be, people into Mars. He he's just, I he, he, I feel like his he's just there, like his he just constantly goes to like the furthest thing possible, and you just don't know how far it stops, right? So like with Mars, the Mars situation, you know, it, it would have been crazy to think that a private company, let alone any company, would be able to shoot up a fucking. Uh, uh, human biome into Mars uh, commercially as a commercial thing, and now this is something that we're talking about. You know, pretty quickly. He thinks by the end of the by the end of I think next year he was talking about here, he's going to be doing commercial space flights for people that are using reusable rockets. Where this was something that was just talked about before, where you know we didn't think that this 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 kind of technology would be possible, affordable, profitable. So it's it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of crazy because when you think about AI and how far it is getting and how good some AIs are getting, it's pretty crazy, you know? 
what what other good AI has there been? Well, we have we have TensorFlow. That's an AI program. Sort and we saw of? how we saw how quickly that has grown and how how good it's gotten. I mean, those videos are insane. Some of the like the like that Carla De Levine video, right? And that's something like, you press a button. That's someone that someone can just press a button on now, and then now you have people's faces on video that is almost indistinguishable from actual video. And I think that's insane. That's fucking nuts. That's good AI. You can't say that's not good yeah. AI. And then what else? I'm, I'm still I'm still waiting for this thing that's going to turn sentient. I, yeah, I mean, start, start, I, us, start us down Terminator. Like the other, the other thing, the other best example has been a machine that figured out how to play a game that 80 people left in the world still play that worked for three days and then was unplugged. What about like, the, yeah, but that's the still, Twitter bot. but that's still insane. Like, that's, that's, that's still, still a insane. Bot, though. I know. But like, the, cause there's, there is like a big difference between like also getting into semantically, like what's the difference between AI and a bot? Cause like there is a big difference, like the sh like AI and Google Home and all that shit. That's not AI. It's a fucking robot. Like there's tons of stuff like that. Like actual AIs making huge progress, but like right. we're, we're nowhere close to there being enough programmers to actually be able to make something that can learn how to code itself. Yeah. Like it's it's getting better. It's still not anywhere close to that from what i've seen yeah yeah i mean we're, we're we could be a ways out i think i think i he, this this the the argument he makes about like nuclear arms and equating it to and how much damage i can do equating it to ai i think makes sense though i mean it, it yeah it does but it's it's like he thinks know, it's, for, it's, for example it's, it's, he thinks facebook is being reckless with their ai development or Facebook's like, look, we're not going to be developing, you know, the next Skynet, which probably is true. But you just, I feel like he he's thinking where you don't know when you cross that boundary, where all of a sudden you create fucking sentient AI intelligence that doesn't know how to, where you don't know how to turn it off. Which, you know, who knows if, we, who knows how far along that is. But once that happens, how do you turn it off? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I just think we're a lot farther from it. Because, like, I mean, your points, too, are, like, he's trying to get us to go to Mars. That's awesome. And, yeah, he's doing really fucking good at that. He also had, what, 60 years of people who had already done the main work of how it works before him. Yeah, but, well, how, you know long, I mean? do you, how long to you is, like, far off? Like, if you're saying, like, 30 years, that's really not that far away, you know? That's, a, that's our lifetime. So yeah. if you're saying like a few lifetimes, then then I'm sure that's a debatable top top topic. But thirty years, twenty five years, I mean that's a that's a reasonable timeline to till we have the threat of AI, you know, infringing upon the ma mankind, which is pretty crazy we'll, to think we'll about. Probably have blown ourselves up before then. Well, I mean Trump and what's his name are meeting up together, a little no, rocket man, a little rocket man. They're not anymore. I thought. Oh, they're not. They called it I off. Know. I think so because I think he. I think he. I don't. I don't. I, who the fuck knows at this point? Basically, that, <laughs> just think that, about there this. There was news that there was news coming out one day that they're going to meet, and then literally the next day, I just see a story saying, "Well, it might not because apparently Trump just got pissed off and screamed, yeah, 'Yeah, I'll meet with him' one day during a fucking argument." Yeah, <laughs> so but I'm now, like, who the fuck knows? But now it's like, think about. 10 years ago, would you ever expect that the president of the United States, which would be Donald Trump, would be meeting North Korea's... Is he a president? He's not really a president, right? Not, that's not what they call him. He's not a king either. What is he? Grand Supreme Leader. He's a Supreme Leader. <laughs> He's just... Supreme. Is that his title? <laughs> Supreme Leader Jong-un? I don't know. That's fucking insane, I mean too. I mean, it's kind of the president's job, so I'm not that surprised, but I'm more surprised that it's Trump. Yeah, exactly. He's fucking crazy. I mean, We're Simpsons crazy. called this it. This is crazy. Yeah. And they call everything. All right, moving on. Oculus Rift era shuts down headsets everywhere. Um, I mean, I haven't used my Oculus Rift in some time, so I didn't know that this happened, but supposedly they put out some type of patch 
where uh, basically shut down a bunch of Oculuses, uh, and they've since released a patch to fix that. So that's not good. Oculus shouldn't be doing that. Um, Wayne's but just some... mad because I mean... you didn't get to play VR chat for a whole three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still saying it. Like we've been saying it for a while. VR is still not where it needs to be. It. There's just nothing. There's just not enough people doing it. You know, like Echo Arena is like the big blockbuster hit, and it's literally fucking space frisbee. We need to get. Be- let's put some fucking funds towards this thing. We can get some cool shit going on. Get these fucking headsets cheaper. Make them a little bit sharper. And then you got yourself a game. Just but gotta right pull now, all yeah. your violent, uh, violent porn on VR. Oh my god, VR porn is. If you're talking about AI being a danger and a threat to human humanity, VR porn, which is already here, is a now threat combine to that with humanity. an AI sex bot. I don't think I my brain can handle this conversation anymore. Uh, new Slack competitors. So we got so Slack. If you know, is a messaging program. Uh, we use Discord uh, in the No Life headquarters. I enjoy Discord. I think Discord does a great job. I've used Slack before when I worked for. Uh, I mean, when I worked with a couple other this, companies. Discord pretty much completely killed things like Teamspeak and Mumble. Yeah, they just do people use Teamspeak them. anymore? Yeah, you didn't have to. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. Mumble, it yeah. doesn't destroy them. It's just <laughs> free. So some people, people, people will just refuse better. to get with the times and still stick with TeamSpeak. Well, it's it TeamSpeak is better audio. Oh, really? Like the audio it, quality on it is kind of better, and you have more control over the server you own. But mm. Discord's still just better because yeah. it's free, and you still have tons of control with Discord. So, yeah. As for what I'm, I'm still like always. I love Discord, but I'm still always a little bit worried about Discord in the back of my mind, just because. Uh, Going to pay, you're saying, like turning into yeah. a pay model. Well, it, it's not even that. It's just like, how the fuck is Discord gonna exist in five years? Like, how do they monetize this, giving everyone a free server? to like right. host things for free on with a free voice and now free video and free everything else discord nitro sure is fucking paying for all of it yeah. i'll tell you that right now it's pretty expensive though it's pretty expensive discord nitro i don't know how many well, people I mean, are I, paying for it i hope because so is running 20 million servers they're gonna have to be running for all of this yeah i really don't want them to go a pay route but if they do go a pay route, I think it would be the one that I would pay for. But now we have these competitors, which kind of are in the same lane, because Slack is great as well. Kate's entire office at Urban Outfitters, they all run on Slack, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but now we have Hangouts Chat, which is essentially the same type of thing. Um, but this is also like, it's you have to pay for it, right? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, technically, yeah, because it's inclu- it. it's included with G Suite. But if you're a startup company who pays for G Suite, you just have this for free now instead of having to pay for Slack, which isn't bad because you get if you pay <laughs> five bucks a month, you get business email, business Gmail, uh, video and voice conferencing, um, and then you get uh, thirty gigabytes cloud storage, and then whatever else that comes with that, which isn't too bad. And then if you look at exactly what comes with hangouts chat because we used to use hangouts a lot i liked it but they kind of it kind of was a little for content like what we're doing now zoom i feel like has just the best video quality compared to hangouts um but it's rather expensive and if they can increase that on on hangouts then i would jump back but it's kind of just bare bones really what is what this is looking like this hangouts chat thing and I can't even look at it without having to fucking pay for it. How am I supposed to look at this thing? Yeah, you guess you just can't. You just got to fucking sign up for that 14-day free trial. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing, too, with that, though, is if you are, like, a heavy G Suite user, that just makes things so much easier. Mm-hmm. Because all like, your you, contacts you, you have there. to. Well, yeah, it has all your contacts. It would have... Like if you use G Suite for like a team calendar or something, you'd have instant access to that. You can help pop up the calendar in the chat or whatever. You know, you could just literally link to like a document, like a Google Doc, 
that you're using like with that multiple people are using or something you could just link straight to that like it looks like so like anything you'd use with g suite you could just pop into it yeah which that's pretty nifty and i always like what google does like with all of their apps they're super clean and just straightforward and they just work right everyone has a fucking gmail account and that's what i like about google and and this is just another cool thing that they're adding and it's obviously a direct indirect competition with slack um and i think the reason why slack works so well is because it's quick it looks great and uh it just makes sense for people who aren't you know aren't usually technically savvy to put up a fucking server and slack makes it pretty easy and same with discord oh that's <clears throat> actually pretty cool too it can use your individual google calendar if you use google calendar to set up meetings and stuff like that so it's got it's got bots that it'll connect with to basically uh if you like you know if you're using like hey Hangouts jerry let's chat, do this tomorrow and then it'll just add it on our calendar it, yeah and it will but it will also find a time that's open on both of our calendars to do that that's dope so like it'll actually go through like the calendars to find what's available that's yeah that's kind of dope that is pretty dope D discord dude you're slacking uh, and then Microsoft has their Teams, Microsoft Teams, which I haven't seen either. Um, and this gets Cortana in, in integration, which is essentially, you know, sort of the same thing with what Google's doing, I'm, I'm assuming. But then this is with Microsoft Office. Uh, so with all your Office stuff. So I assume that Microsoft's um, Teams thing is going to be pretty popular since a lot of people do use Office. Yeah. And they're just going to take both. They're just going to take pretty big chunks out of Slack. I don't know if a company that's already using Slack is going to switch to one of these. I don't Probably know not, why you would, it, you know? But, I mean, it's it, they're also power plays for future startups, basically. Because I know with, like, I think it was Teams, you can, you know, have up to, like, 10 people using it for free. And then you, you only start paying once you add people on. Versus, like, Slack, you know, you just have to pay from the start. So that's, I think they're going after that kind of route. Mm -hmm. of inc like incentivizing people who are trying to pay as little as possible to start using it or like with g suite you know if you're a startup yeah just buy g suite now you have that you don't have to also buy slack mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah so we're talking about like future market growth and now there's three in the realm in, in competition with slack and then you have telegram and stuff like that for a little for a little bit more privacy mm -hmm. um microsoft is oh, also adding Cloud. You can use GIFs with uh, Teams. Oh, use, really? It's got a Giphy bot like Discord. Oh, my God. Did you hear about what happened with <laughs> Instagram? How they Didn't they have Giphy for like a day? Well, no, they had it for a while, but they just took it down because we'll talk about that story next. Okay. It's pretty fucking insane. Um, but yeah, also with Teams, there's uh, Cortana Translation. And then there's cloud recording for meetings with automatic transcription and time coding, background blur on video, mobile sharing for meetings, and the ability to find and add Skype room systems into any meeting. So it's a little bit more of, it definitely seems a little bit more geared towards uh, businesses. Um, so like you said, if you're a startup, you pick either or, and now you have the entire office suite with this implementation in there, or you have G Suite, which is pretty dope. And, but Slack is still is a good option. Slack is pretty yeah. damn good app. I think uh, I think Google's the more compelling one to be honest. Like if you're doing a startup, like the G Suite, you can't get a better deal deal than G Suite if it's also got Slack built in now, basically. So much cheaper than Office for sure. I mean, five bucks a month is nothing. That's nothing, and you basically get all you need, all what you need. You know, when I do like any type of like file sharing or document sharing, I use Google. I use Google Docs. You know. Google Sheets or whatever the writer one is because it's just super easy to just add someone's Gmail account to have them start editing and you're already tied into your, your calendar. You're already tied into your uh, contacts. Um, and I just spilled juice all over myself. Well, anyways, Instagram had Giphy for a little bit where you can add Giphy stickers to your Instagram stories, right? And what happened was someone found this racist, super racist GIF on as a sticker on Instagram. 
and essentially what this gift was. Now, when you think racism, you're probably thinking of like the N word. You're probably thinking of like you know some graphic comics or something. This is I'm thinking this, of the try hard emote. This <laughs> this one is the, the most racist gif I've ever seen, to be honest. And essentially, it's a white dude with a microphone going like this. And you guys can see it here. I'm gonna put it up. The words aren't. You can't see the words. But it, it's basically a white dude with a microphone going like this. And there is, at the top, it says, N-word crime death counter. And then there's a counter that ticks. And then on the, on the opposite end of the counter, there's a monkey that's, like, cranking this thing. And then there's a quote that says, keep cranking, bozo. The numbers just keep climbing. And someone found this looking up crime, which is, like, a, like when you search a GIF, you just type in certain words. And they, I guess they typed crime. Found this GIF. And was like, what the actual fuck is this? And uh, they were, Instagram was just like, whoop, that's that. Fucking yanked all Giphy support. Giphy was like, whoa, we're super sorry. Uh, our moderators didn't catch this. Not going to happen again. And Instagram's like, we're not going to put you back on the app until you prove to us this will never happen again. That is a super bad oversight on Giphy's, on Giphy's part. You know, definitely... You gotta clean that shit up, man. You can't be having that. That's not a good one. That's not a good one. I can understand if it was a little bit more secretive or like a more of a clever racist gif, but it wasn't. This is just plain, blatant, blatant old racism. So that's not good. Apple is on track to becoming the first bit a uh, trillion dollar company. Uh, Apple, most valuable company in the world. They just keep on climbing. Their market value of about $910 billion. Stock only needs to go up another 10% 10 for Apple to top $1 trillion, which is, um, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And you think, you know, someone with that much money should be able to keep on top of stock. Like there were stock issues for a while with Apple. But I guess their products just are so difficult to manufacture. And there's just so, whatever Apple does on QC is just so, um, uh, what's the word, stringent that, you know, they are they just have stock issues when it comes to putting together certain products. So I thought that was interesting that we're going to have our pretty soon our first trillion dollar company. We're going to be breaking the trillion dollar club. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll do this one next. We're getting some rumors of cheaper Apple products. Um, yeah. That's always the this spring rumor. Yeah, when did they do their thing? It should be pretty soon. It should be any day now. I'm not yeah, exactly sure that when. usually comes out June or July. June, I think, early summer. Yeah. What they're basically saying is they're going to get rid of certain models, drop the price down on other models, uh, cheaper iPads and MacBooks, which is pretty dope. A new MacBook Air for $800. We'll see about that. Yeah. Be That's interesting good. if that actually happens or if they just like announce it and it's just the normal MacBook Air that everyone already sells for $800. I mean, it ain't going to be too, it ain't going to be much different. I don't know what else they no. could do to the MacBook Air. Maybe put a touch screen on it. That was a rumor, because apparently they patented a double, a double uh, screened laptop where the bottom's just a touch screen. Mm. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Why not? <laughs> I mean, the, the, you already got you already got it with the fucking butterfly switches. Just go all the way and make it even worse. <laughs> just make it a fucking tablet. <laughs> two tablets they're touching on um new lenovo thinkpad there's a review that's how you can go see them on engadget uh, they're pretty much everywhere thinkpads are pretty much the business laptop and this one is still the king you're just basically getting a super durable you know io is just excellent you know super reliable laptop ThinkPads i fucking hate lenovo what why I, I, when when we deal with Lenovo's up at work, they're always just a pain in the dick. Like their parts are really, like their part numbers are kind of fucked. Everything's weird. I don't know. I just hate Lenovo. You just have a personal 
yeah personal, yeah i've never used a lenovo besides like getting them to bios and that's it but <laughs> like, fucking tearing them down and trying to find part numbers on all the parts it's fucking shitty i hate lenovo I, I, I'll, hate him with you. Right out there. I'll hate him just with you. I'll hate him with you. Appreciate it. I'll join the club Sol- with you. Solidarity. Fuck Lenovo, dude. Yeah, fuck Lenovo. Um, the, uh, <laughs> this next story is pretty dope. Uh, this dude took pictures. Uh, he what he basically did was put halos around these mountains, and the way he did it was he took a drone up and attached the light to it and flew it around these mountains in like a perfect circular pattern. And then took a slow exposure photograph of them. So what you get is a, a sick fucking halo across these mountains, which actually looks really, really cool. Because if you look at some of the photos, I mean, it looks like they, they look otherworldly. They're pretty dope. What um, did he put a halo that. around? A mountain, like these mountains and these weird like kind of red geod- mountains and stuff like that. Not just like a mountain. Yeah. Like school. Yeah, it's actually looks like some really like, good idea. You know, like Rimworld Mars shit. Yeah, like, no, I was, was just like I was some saying, crazy weird place. I was just I was just saying because you said mountains third like three times. <laughs> mountains, mountains, <laughs> mountains, mountains. It's like uh, it looks like uh, what everyone look wanted sick. No Man's Sky to be. Yeah, <laughs> right. It does look sick though. Yeah, super good idea. You know, super good idea. Uh, oh, there's a new Sony full-frame camera out that is sweeping the photography world by the storm. This is the camera that is going to be really hard to not recommend these days. It's the a7 III. I have the a7 R3, which is more of the high-resolution camera. It's more focused on photography. This is basically a Swiss Army knife. Full-frame sensor. There's no crap on 4K. She's 4K up to 30 frames per second. Um, it's got 24.2 megapixels, 10 frames per second, um, shooting up to 51,000 ISO. It's got the a nine autofocusing system, which is best in class. There's no other better autofocusing system out there right now. Um, it's got HDR on 4k. It it, it fucking has everything for $2,000. If you're an aspiring photographer and you're looking to get a full frame camera that does both images and and video th- this is the one that everyone has to recommend I, I don't know who's going to be able to beat this we're still waiting on the a7s2 which is more of the low light video focused uh video camera that is supposed to we're hoping is competing with the gh5 where it gives us 4k 60 frames per second it gives us 10 bit 422 recording um, a bunch of more other video features involved there we haven't seen that yet but we've gotten the A7R3, we got the A7 III, and I think they're just going to keep on, to keep this train going, and they're going to put out one of the best video cameras that you can buy. Uh, so Sony's just fucking destroying the game right now in terms of photo, which is cool because it's always nice to have some competition. I want to see how the market reacts to it. I want to see how Canon and Nikon react to this. Sony has a camera for everything. You got on a point and shoot, they got them. You want a high end point and shoot, they got them. You want a GoPro, they got them. You want uh, full frame, they got them. You want crop sensor, they got them. You want cinema camera, they got them all. Sony has basically covered the entire market with some of the best products that you can buy. Still a little lackluster on lens selection, but they are getting there. And Sigma just announced all of their new art series lenses, which are some of the best lenses you can buy. Also great prices, but now they're coming in Sony E-mount. So they can be natively attached to your camera rather than needing an adapter. So they're really, it's just looking really good for, for Sony. PNY doubles the capacity of its CS900 consumer SSD to 960 gigabytes. That's pretty good news. There you go. Pony. No, Do you pronounce them pony? Any. When I look at that, I pronounce pony. I, I can't see no. it any other way. I pronounce PNY. It just looks like pony to me. It, it doesn't look like a word to me or an acronym. It just looks like PNY. <laughs> I just look at it and I go, it's obviously pony. Pony. <laughs> What does it say for? I have oh. no I've seen pony around for fucking years, but I have no idea what it stands for. Let's find out right now. It stands for I don't know. P- gibberish. It stands, it stands for, for PNY. <laughs> it stands for fucking PNY. El oh Nino. no. It, it stands for Paris, New York. That's what it stands for. Sure. As they use to distribute their memory modules from Paris, France to New York. 
there you go. That's that's anticlimactic. And knowing is half the battle. So you mean it's it's PNY? <laughs> PNY, and you just stick it's, with that. It's one. the PNY flight. Just stick with that one. Uh, we got new monitors for 2018. New Pro Asus Pro Art monitors. I really want to get my hands on one. Might check might check this one out. Um, I, they all seem pretty much run of the mill. Everything seems to be getting a little bit more me- uh, resolution, a little bit better Ooh. color accuracy, a little the bit better. The travel size refresh. one's dope. The Asus. Yeah. Yeah. No, USB C two. There's there's not a lot of really great travel monitors, and I've been looking into getting one. That could be dope. Yeah. If it's actually like a good, like travel monitor. I think Line. I want to say Linus has a video about it. You could check it out. I've seen a couple reviews on them, um, from, I want to say CES last year. So there, there, there's a, there's some footage of them out there. I know it's USB C, which is pretty cool too. So you can daisy chain them, if you wanted to. Um, we got a couple Dell. We got a couple HPs. Uh, nothing too crazy. I, I, I like kind of where monitor technology is heading. Um, but we're, they're still like when they first come out, they're still a little bit too expensive. I want to see a little bit cheaper monitors. Like how much is this external one? Let's find out. I don't know. I don't know. Cause Tom's hardware won't let, won't show me. So we're just never going to know. 3D printed house. <clears throat> I think we covered the 3D house printer in this show before, where essentially it's just a big concrete thing. Like it just like goes like this, but it does it in concrete. And um, this cheap 3D printed home is a start for the 1 billion who lack shelter. So essentially it's meant for low income areas. Um, I want to say like... Um, what is it called? Nas- uh, natural disaster prone areas. Yeah, and basically, I thought you were going to say Section 8. Section 8. I'm, all I'm saying is I kind of want one. Section 8 has some nice houses, man. I've seen I've seen the new Section 8 houses in Philly. They look nice. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, crap, dude. Give me a 500 square foot house that only costs four grand. Sure, dude. Even use it as a travel house. Super like, cheap, right? I'll buy, dude, I'll buy, I'd, I'd gladly buy five of those. Leave one in like five cities. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty dope. Put them right next to the airport, so you could just fly and just chill at your little tiny house right next, right next to the airport. Yeah. Every time, every time a jet would land, your house would shake. It'd be great. <laughs> well, it's made of uh, concrete, so you could do is on the outside just soundproof it. Just put that sound foam up. You might be all right. So these are called the Icon houses, and I want to see if they have a. A photo of them actually printing it or uh yeah there you go so you can see it there it's essentially just a big ass 3d printer which is pretty cool you would think and you can see how what when it prints it it prints it in like a certain uh pattern too that way it's a little bit more structurally sound like it's not you know it's not just like shooting down concrete but but look, dude, when they when they do them up, man, and they get some IKEA furniture in there, they look pretty nice. I wouldn't mind having one for four I mean, grand. For four I mean, grand, come on. you can't complain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's got a porch and everything. Shit. Yeah, the porch just. I mean, the outside looks nicer than the inside. To be honest, I don't see any insulation, which that would be an oh, issue you'd have to figure out. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it gets cold as fuck in there if it's yeah. uh, in the winter. But for four grand, dude, you got a lot of exposable income that you could use to to add some insulation or. I mean, like if something. you could make end up just making it into like a ten grand house, that, dude, that's cheaper than rent. That's cheaper than a fucking car. Yeah. It's definitely a good way to go for people who need cheap housing. Um. Nvidia Turing not being released at GTC twenty eighteen. We thought it was. It looks like they're not going to. We don't know why. Do you know why? Mostly because why do they need to? They're still printing money left and right, basically. Yeah. They're just going to wait then? They're just going to say, fuck it. Fuck it. Probably. Well, the rumor, the rumor is they might announce it 
but it won't be out till July. But who the fuck knows? Yeah, these these are these these rumors you never fucking know. They always change shit. Yeah, no, the rumor changes every week too. Yeah. So maybe Basically, next a couple maybe... of people a <laughs> couple of people hear a rumor and then everyone prints a story about it. Maybe by next week, uh, then they will release it. Maybe by next week it will be released. You never fucking know. All right. Please sir, release her. Please sir, release her. Please. No. Is that a song? Yeah. I am unfamiliar. I'm going fi- to find it and then I'm going to send it to you. All right. All right. Uh, cryptocurrencies tumble after SEC's unlawful exchanges. This is our last two crypto stories and then we're out of here. We'll see you guys next week. Another sea of red is plaguing cryptocurrency traders after the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission issued a strong warning about unlawful cryptocurrency exchanges. Nearly every digital currency tumbled today, and most of them fell more than 10%. The SEC declared that cryptocurrencies fall under the definition of a security, and therefore cryptocurrency exchanges are subject to regulatory scrutiny. As a result, any company operating a platform that enables people to exchange cryptos must register as a national securities exchange, or they would be considered unlawful platforms. So basically, they want you to pay taxes on your cryptos. Uh, and they want to be able to monitor what the fuck is going on in these in these securities markets. So, of course, it's going to shake the market up. I think it's a good thing. I think eventually it's going to start putting more trust behind crypto. And people are going to start wanting to put their long-term investments in there. Uh, anything to stabilize the market. If the price has got to come down a little bit to stabilize, I'm perfectly fine with that. Because once it's stabilized... We can worry about focusing on the technology, making it cheaper and making it quicker to make transactions. Once that happens and we get the foundation of the technology in, put in place, well, then you're going to see that price drastically rise and essentially be pretty pretty safe after that. But until then, it's the Wild West. And then we have John Oliver going on about cryptocurrencies on his show uh, last week tonight, which is one of my favorite shows on TV. I think he does an excellent job on this program. He talks about cryptocurrencies, basically talks about BitConnect. And then he talks about um, kind of the uncertainty about cryptocurrencies and kind of what they mean. And uh, I did a pretty good piece on it. I thought it was pretty funny. He essentially... uh, uh, equated them to the new modern age digital beanie babies and how essentially we give them value basically because people will pay value for them, just like beanie babies, which kind of makes sense in a simple way. I will say, watching it, like we were talking earlier about Screlly and doing like, you know, bragging about shit that you shouldn't brag about because it's illegal. And he brought up that whole thing with the pump and dump where like they're just bragging about what they do when like it's clearly not like it's supposed to be illegal. Well, that's the thing. It's not illegal to pump and dump in crypto. No, not because it's not regulated really at all. Right. So what these pump and dump schemers were doing were saying, look, we're going to pump and dump coins. And if you sign into our list, you can get in on the action. I didn't know that existed. I knew that pump and dumps existed, but I didn't know that there were companies that were basically doing it um, as like a fucking, like if you were to go do your taxes and how a company would do your taxes. Basically, you had the same thing, but for pump and dump coins. So I thought that was super interesting. Um, yeah. Also, Keegan-Michael Key at the end. Uh, responsibility. Yeah, with that him. That was a good bit. With that him as the big connect bit. guy. Yeah, Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty Also, pretty in fun, other crypto news, piece. there's apparently a new NVIDIA GPU coming out just for mining. So, why not? <laughs> I mean, if I'm NVIDIA, of course I'm doing that. Of course. It's just money to them. They're just printing more and more money for them. So, there you go. I mean, I guess a mining card. What you would want it to do is be rated to run at a high voltage for a long period of time, like always on. Kind of like a NAS. Like if you're doing a NAS hard drive, you kind of want the same for your well, they, graphics cards. So they can say that's what they do. They already have those. two of them, but this is a new one basically. Because they already, they already, NVIDIA already has one and AMD already has one. That's like sort of out. You can like <clears throat> if you can find them, but they're basically just. One's a gutted 
470, one's a gutted uh, 1060. Yeah. And it's just basically the 1060 just without uh, in at, like out ports. There's no like HDMI ports or anything on it. Yeah. And then this one's apparently five five gigabytes of memory of G, uh, GDDRX5 with the X. Okay. So, so sure. <laughs> so <laughs> like everything about it's just like sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that, dog. Yeah, like, like, hey, dude, you can buy this graphics card that can only do crypto mining if you want, but it's yeah, supposed to do forty-seven hash hash or m the like, hashes per million hashes per whatever's for Ethereum. Yeah, which is pretty good, but like, why? <laughs> yeah, but like, why buy a mining card? when you can't repurpose it as anything else. There's no other value to it. So if mining does go down and you can't mine anymore, and that car's completely useless, whereas maybe there's some salvage salvageability in a regular graphics card. You know, you can Don't use tell them it. that. Oh, yeah. Get them you to buy the mining cards. Come you didn't on. hear that from me. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. All right, so that's it for No Life Tech Show. We will catch you guys next week. Make sure you hit up our website, www.nolife.digital. Make sure you hit up our our Twitter, our Instagram, and our Twitch, and make sure you pay for your porn. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye now. Don't pay for porn. <laughs>